Lobster is my favorite film of the year so far. I wouldn't say that's extremely high praise, because, like, look what we have for competition. But the Lobster is smart, original, and extremely funny. The last thing I want right now is a kiss from a silly little girl. <laughs> it's a film that doesn't pander to the audience, nor does it devolve into pretentious drivel with no real point. The only complaint I have with this film is the repetitive soundtrack and some scenes go on a bit too long. But besides that, it's a great movie filled with fantastic comedic performances. That night, in my sleep, I dreamt that we lived in a big house together in the city with a large, well-lit kitchen. And I was wearing dark blue trousers and a tight cream blouse. And he took my clothes off and fucked me up the ass. And lots of smart social commentary. When I was walking out of the theater, everyone seemed to enjoy it. Enough to meet up and discuss it outside the theater. But the main thing I heard these people say was, I liked it, but I had no fucking idea what was happening. I feel this movie is mostly straightforward, and much like Under the Skin, which is another fantastic movie I made an analysis for, you can understand vaguely what's going on as long as you pay attention. After a couple of viewings, I was able to get into this film much more and make sense of it all. So for those of you who have no clue what you just watched, let me help you out a bit. The movie is basically a satire of relationships, marriage, society, and how we lump everyone into certain categories. Relationships are not supposed to be complex. They're pretty black and white. Is there a bisexual option available? No, sir. This option is no longer available since about last summer. Shoe size, please. 44 and a half. 44 or 45. There are no half sizes. I'm afraid you have to decide right now if you want to be registered as a homosexual or a heterosexual. It's a world with not a lot of gray. Everything's pretty black and white. Let's take a look at Lea Seydoux's character for a second. It's very, very subtle, but you can tell that Lea Seydoux's character is attracted to both men and women. It's very brief, but you can see it here. And you can see her jealousy and anger during certain scenes. Many took this as she's attracted to Colin Farrell, which I guess she could be right. But she also gives very obvious romantic glances at Rachel Weisz and the maid. My opinion is that she is bisexual, which in this society is probably the worst thing you can be. You can't be in the middle. You gotta be one way or the other. I'm afraid you have to decide right now if you want to be registered as a homosexual or a heterosexual. I mean, the reason they give as to why they don't have a bisexual option doesn't even make any sense. No, sir, this option is no longer available since about last summer due to several operational problems. This is probably why she went in the woods and started a whole loner group. Potential matches were basically judged solely on stupid binary attributes, like whether or not they had a limp, or whether or not they had a bloody nose, or whether or not they were short-sighted. My defining characteristic is that I have a very beautiful smile. Everyone speaks in boring monotone, and the whole love thing in this movie feels very artificial almost as if they have to do this. That's why the ticking clock element of this movie works so well. You got 45 days to find someone. You got six days left. I guess you'll just go with this woman. Fuck it. I think we are a match. Yes, I think so too. Really, they're not looking for companions that'll make them happy. You just need a body to live with and a kid. That's what society says you need to be happy. You need someone to save you from choking or save you from being raped. Help! Help! There's a ticking clock element in real life too. And while it's much slower, it's still there. If you're 25 and you don't have a wife yet, okay, that's fine. By the time you're 40 or 50, you have to have a wife and kids. Everyone else has them. It's what everyone says you should have to be happy. But what if you're old, or you have certain qualities that aren't necessarily attractive? Society shuns you. And at that point, you might as well be a fucking animal. If I don't find a suitable partner soon, I'm gonna kill myself by throwing myself out of one of the rooms. We don't really know the backstory here, but the point is the person she was with is now gone, and since she's old, no one wants to be with her, and she is now desperate to find someone to be with. Can I come to your room sometime for a chat? I could give you a blowjob, or you could just fuck me. I always swallow after fellatio, and I've got absolutely no problem with anal sex, if that's your thing. My ex-husband always used to say I had the most beautiful thighs he'd ever seen, but let's not talk about him. The only couples we see in this film are ones that are matched up because they have a single attribute that they share, or couples where one of the partners is 
mildly attracted to the other person. He also thought that he liked her accent and he'd always preferred women with short hair. So he decided that she was the one. Or because they're scared of being turned into an animal. What's worse? To die of cold and hunger in the woods. To become an animal that will be killed and eaten by some bigger animal. Or to have a nosebleed from time to time. To become an animal that will be killed and eaten by some bigger animal. Exactly. And so they have to shape themselves in order to be compatible. After all, you don't want to be an animal. Or alone. No one wants to be alone. The whole process is so artificial, no one in the film even has names. And the only character that does is the main character, David. A boring, generic name for a boring, generic white male. Other names include Doctor, Nosebleed Woman, Hotel Manager, 70-Year-Old Waiter, Bald Man, Biscuit Woman, Police Officer 1, Police Officer 2, and Short Sighted Woman. Even the way the film is shot is extremely static and boring. The camera doesn't move around a whole lot. There's nothing in this movie that's exciting, and that's by design. I think this, in many ways, makes the film funnier. The film contains one of the best action scenes I've ever seen. Room one eight seven, please. Like, that's hilarious. There's one word I see a lot in reviews of this film, and that word is repetitive. And I think the repetitiveness is almost intentional. Sure, it gets annoying at times, and I agree, the score gets really, really repetitive. But the fact that the same pieces of music are being played over and over, and the fact that a lot of the dialogue is repeated over and over, really does a great job of zoning you out and eating your soul away a little bit at a time. The only reason anyone gets together at all is because society is basically pointing a gun at them saying, get married. Meanwhile, the loners, the single people in the movie, basically do the exact same thing. If you're single, you have to follow a different set of rules. Otherwise, instead of being turned into an animal, you'll be mutilated. The loners also manipulate each other with fear. You're not allowed to form a bond with anyone. You're not allowed to get physical with anyone. You must dig your own grave immediately. Maybe no one actually knows each other, and the only reason they're with another person is so they don't feel so alone. Maybe relationships are really selfish, and the second we don't need something from another person, we just get rid of them. That's another theme this movie really drives home. And it's really up to you to decide whether this is true, or believe that it's just society forcing people to be so cold. And that human beings are actually capable of showing emotion and loving each other. The movie has some examples of this too. As static and awkward as most of the relationships in this movie are. I'm very happy. Me too. The relationship between Colin Farrell and Rachel Weiss seems pretty genuine. Same with Colin Farrell and his brother. If he was really just a cold asshole, he wouldn't feel anything. That's the question this movie's asking. Do we really love each other? If this woman dies, do you think you'll manage on your own or will you get involved with someone else? No, I, I can live alone, she can't. Shoot her. <laughs> and if we're not, are we able to move on with our lives and believe that we are? When Colin Farrell tells Jessica Barden the truth about her husband, do these people go on living their lives? Living the lie? The movie never answers this question. It just keeps asking it in different ways. You better get out while you still can. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the movie, Colin Farrell can decide to blind himself so that he's compatible with his wife or choose to lie to his wife about being blind. It's not like she can tell. She's fucking blind. Maybe the movie's not as cynical as we all think it is. When you live in a world that's constantly pressuring you to find love, or have a kid, or get married, that actually makes you unhappy. Maybe everyone is just jealous of what Colin Farrell and Rachel Weisz had. These two weren't pressured to be together. There was no time limit. There was no set of rules. There was no telling them step by step how to have a healthy relationship. It just happened. Despite all the rules their world put in place. They're the only couple in the entire movie that actually are compatible. And it's this twisted set of rules that actually ruins it. Maybe the best way to be happy is to let it happen naturally. I love my wife so much. I could die for her. That's how much I love her.